JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's Daily Market Review for May the 27th. I am Harald Lampos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as, considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, as it is always the case, let's start with the performance of the greenback against the other G10 currencies. The dollar traded lower against uh, all the other G10s on Tuesday and during the Asian morning Wednesday. It underperformed the most versus NOC, CAT, Aussie and Kiwi in that order, while it lost the least ground against uh, SEC, the Yen, uh, the Euro and the Swiss franc. Now, the commodity-linked currencies continue to attract flows, while the safe havens stayed on the back foot, suggesting that investors maintained their optimism over a potential global economic uh, recovery due to the loosening of the coronavirus-related uh, restrictions. EU indices closed in the green, while uh, resuming trading after Monday's uh, bank holiday. UK's FTSE 100 gained 1.24%, one, gained as Prime Minister Johnson said on Monday that uh, high street shops, department stores and shopping centers will uh, reopen next month. The positive morale uh, rolled, over, uh, rolled over to the US session with Wall Street indices searching uh, at the open. However, they came off their highs following a report saying that the Trump, the Trump administration is considering a range of sanctions on Chinese officials. Uh, businesses and uh, financial inst institutions in response to China's plans of imposing national security laws on Hong Kong. A subdued appetite continued during the Asian trading today as well, as media reported that China, that China expanded the scope of the draft uh, national security legislation to, to include organizations and individuals, with uh, protests in Hong Kong flaring again. Now, although Japan's Nikkei gained 0.79%, uh, currently Ch China's Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong's Hang Seng are uh, 0.28 and 1.15% down respectively. Now, as for our view, it has not changed yet. Yes, tensions between the world's two largest economies could jeopardize any potential trade accord, but at the moment, investors appear to be placing more bets on a global economic recovery as governments around the globe continue to ease their, lockdowns, their lockdown uh, measures. Adding uh, to that optimism is news that more companies are joining the race to test their coronavirus drugs on humans. For now, headlines surrounding the US-China saga are just resulting in corrections in the broader recovery. The exception to that appears to be Hong Kong's Hang Seng. Having all that in mind, we expect equities and risk-linked currencies like the Aussie to rebound again, and safe havens like the dollar, the yen and the franc to stay on the back foot. In order to start worrying over larger declines in the equity world, we prefer to wait for actions rather than uh, just talks namely the actual imposition of sanctions or one of the US and China withdrawing from the process of achieving a trade accord. Now, as for today's events, there are no major economic indicators on today's schedule. The only data worth mentioning is the American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil inventories, but as it is always the case, uh, no forecast is uh, available. Investors may be eager to find out details on uh, the European Commission's uh, plan over a financial rescue fund uh, for the bloc after Austria, Sweden, Denmark and uh, Netherlands opposed uh, the plan proposed by France and Germany. As for the speakers, we have three on the agenda, ECB President Christine Lagarde, 
and this in be Vice President Luis de Quintos will uh, speak during the European morning while later in the US session we will get to hear from St. Louis uh, Fed President James Bullard. We will pay more attention to Lagarde's and uh, De Guindos uh, speeches as we may get more clues on whether the ECB is planning or not to expand its stimulus efforts at the upcoming gathering uh, scheduled for next week. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking uh, forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.